friends, it's Bina with TCM Review Seminars. For the last decade, I've helped thousands of students pass their board exams on the first try, and I would love to help you as well. For today's presentation, I want to look at this case study. This is a case study that was posted on our Facebook page for our daily question, and it's a case study that many students got wrong. I'd say it was a 50-50 toss up between the two remaining answers. And so I want to show you how to get through case studies quickly and efficiently. On your board exams, over 50% of it could be case studies depending on the test you take. And case studies slow students down. So you need a really well vetted approach to case studies. And I've been teaching this approach for over 10 years now. You can use it in clinic, you can use it on your School exams, you can, of course, use it on your board exams. But the thing with the boards is you have a limited amount of time. You need a system to get through the case studies so you can work quickly and efficiently, finish the test with time to spare, and most importantly, find the right answer every single time. So are you ready? Do you want my approach? There are three steps to take with any case study, whether on school exams or in clinic. Eliminate based on the tongue and pulse. Categorize the symptoms into eight principal differentiation. Categorize the symptoms by Zongfu organ involvement. Looking at tongue and pulse is never enough. It only works if tongue and pulse are present in the case. Oftentimes, tongue and pulse are not even given, or you're being asked to give the tongue and pulse as part of the answer. If all you have to determine the answer is tongue and pulse, you're excuse me, but you're screwed if it isn't in the case study. That's why there are three separate distinct steps in my approach. When tongue and pulse doesn't get you to the right answer, you have two other steps to rely on. Now, not all steps are going to be necessary in each case. Sometimes you have the answer after the first step. Other times, a particular step won't supply enough information for you to eliminate an answer, and that's okay. These three steps are all you need. If one doesn't help, the other two will. That's what makes this approach pure gold. Let's have a look. This is a more complicated case, so it's really good for my one, two, three for case studies. When this case study was posted on Facebook, 50% of the students got this answer wrong. With this patient, we have depression and anxiety. Okay, these are our chief complaints. Generally, a chief complaint can give you a lot of information as far as which way to go in terms of diagnosis. With depression and anxiety, it doesn't really tell you much. Depression, even though the default tends to be liver cheese stagnation for whatever reason, don't forget phlegm misting, spleen cheese sinking, so many other patterns can cause depression. It's the same thing with anxiety. It could be from the heart, it can be from the kidneys, it could be due to excess, it could be due to deficiency. So we don't want to jump to a conclusion when a symptom can be caused by many, many different patterns. So first, eliminate based on tongue and pulse. When the tongue and pulse are given in a case study, that is the fastest, easiest way to start eliminating the answers that are incorrect. So for this tongue, we see that it's red with purple spots. There's a crack in the center that runs to the tip. The coating is greasy and yellow. The pulse is slippery, wiry, and full. So we're gonna take these qualities and we're gonna break them down into eight principles. To review our eight principles, we have exterior, interior, heat and cold, excess, deficiency, yin and yang. Yin and yang, we're not gonna use because yin and yang are relative terms. They're not helpful for diagnosing. But the other three categories are great. Interior and exterior, just a quick little hint, most cases are gonna be interior. When it's exterior, you're looking for fever and chills and possibly a superficial pulse, but not always. So basically, we're looking at four of the eight principles. We're looking at excess deficiency, heat or cold. With this tongue, it's red. Red tells us heat. It doesn't tell us excess or deficiency because a yin deficiency tongue can also be red. A full heat tongue will also be red, okay? Purple spots tells us excess. Why is it excess? Because it always means blood stasis. 
even though blood stasis isn't part of the eight principles, I do like to jot it down because when you're looking for blood stasis, whether you see it on the tongue or anywhere else in the case, it's very easy to, to find in the answers. So it's, it's a good little trick outside of the eight principles. Then we have a crack in the center that runs to the tip. Now, when we have that crack, it always tells us that there's a heart issue happening. Okay, so this doesn't break down into eight principles, but it's good to take note of these very clear symptoms that point to one diagnosis. The coating is greasy, which tells us excess. Greasy also tells us one other thing. It tells us that there is damp or phlegm in this case. The yellow reinforces the heat. Then we have slippery. Now, slippery can mean a few things. It can mean damp, it can mean phlegm, it can mean pregnancy, it can mean heat. So looking just at the tongue and pulse, slippery really doesn't help us. The only thing it tells us is that there's excess in this case, right? Because all those qualities, aside from the pregnancy, tells us, tells us um, excess. And then we have full, which also tells us excess. So excess heat is a must for the answers. And if we have blood stasis, some kind of heart issue, damp and phlegm, even better. So when we look at A, this is excess, liver cheese stagnation, heart fire, there's our excess heat, and then we have blood stasis. This would be better if it had phlegm or damp. But let's look at the other answers because remember, there's no right answer for a multiple choice test. It's the best of the four given. So then we look at B and we have phlegm, great, that takes care of that, fire, that takes care of our heat, and then we have stomach and heart with blood stasis. So we've got our blood stasis in there, we've got our heart issues, that looks pretty good. When we look at C, we have heart phlegm fire, that covers the heart, the phlegm, the heat. We have liver cheese stagnation, that covers excess. Heart phlegm fire also covers excess, doesn't it? And then we have blood stasis as well, so that one looks pretty good. When we look at D, we have stomach phlegm fire with blood stasis. But we don't have heart, and since we have that crack in the center that runs to the tip, more than likely we have heart issues, especially with the anxiety, which tends to point towards heart or comes from kidney disorders, but it won't come from, from a stomach disorder, right, alone. So D is out. And A is out too, because it's missing that phlegm damp component. Okay, so now we have it down to two answers. Our next step is going to be to categorize the symptoms based on eight principle differentiation. So since we were able to eliminate two of the four answers, we're gonna go into the case and we're gonna look at the other symptoms. But we're only looking at symptoms that give us a clear diagnosis. A clear diagnosis being that they are attributed to just one pattern. And we're gonna divide these into our eight principles. So mania tells us excess and it tells us heat. Then we have nightmares and restless sleep. Now, restless sleep can be due to excess or deficiency heat, but it tends to be heat. Then we have nightmares, and that could be a variety of different patterns leading to nightmares. Heat is definitely one of them, but it's not the only one. So we're gonna leave nightmares alone. We're not gonna use it for a diagnosis because it doesn't tell us one pattern. Then we have stabbing pain on the forehead. That tells us excess. Then we have that the chest feels constricted. Constriction in the chest could be anything. Again, it won't lead us to a clear diagnosis. And then we have nasal discharge with thick yellow phlegm. This tells us excess for sure, it's yellow, so it tells us heat, and we know there's phlegm involved. So, so far we're not ha getting anything else that's gonna really help us differentiate, but let's work through this just so you understand how to approach with, with case studies. With burning pain in her epigastrium, this tells us excess heat. And then she wants to drink ice cold water, but can't manage to drink much even though she's very thirsty. And this tells us excess heat, but there's something else going on because if it was pure excess heat, right, she would want to drink a lot of water and she'd be able to. But when she can't drink, 
that points to some kind of obstruction in the middle jowl that's preventing her from taking in large intakes of fluids. So right now we know there's excess heat. This step here categorized the symptoms based on eight principles. When we look at our answers, it didn't really help us eliminate. We still have our excess heat in both of these answers. We've got the uh, phlegm in both the answers. So now we have to go to our third step. And our third step is to categorize the symptoms based on Zong Fu organs involved. Again, we're only looking at the symptoms that give us a clear Zong Fu one organ involvement. When we look at the answers here, we know that there's stomach involved in B and there's heart involved in B. And when we look at C, we know there's liver and there's heart. So basically, heart is in both answers. We really are trying to differentiate, is it a stomach involvement or a liver involvement? So now let's go back in the case and see what we can find. Depression, anxiety, mania. Mania sometimes you can have with stomach issues. When we look at the stabbing pain on the forehead, there's our stomach. That's Yang Ming channel. Forehead is governed by stomach. The constriction in the chest, well, and the nasal discharge, if you were thinking that's towards the lungs, well, lung isn't even an option here. So sometimes you have cases where you have symptoms and you can completely ignore them because they don't really fit into your answer options. So don't force them to fit, just ignore them. Then we have burning pain in the epigastrium. That's our stomach again. And then the drinking, well, that's just pure heat. So basically we're seeing a lot of stomach here. We're seeing the heart, of course, and we're not seeing any symptoms for liver cheese stagnation. You could say wiry pulse. However, wiry means phlegm, and that totally fits this case. It also means pain, and she does have stabbing pain on her forehead. Those two would be better options for the meaning for wiry in this case than a liver disharmony. For Liver cheese stagnation, we want to see some symptoms of liver cheese stagnation. Hypochondrial distension, pain that comes and goes, mood swings, not depression, mania, but more like uh, fluctuating moods, right? Um, she's a female. We could see premenstrual issues going on here, and we don't see any of those. So we really can't say that there is any liver issues here. So the answer for this one is B. Half the students answered C for this because they saw that wiry pulse and they jumped right to a diagnosis of liver cheese stagnation. The main thing I want you to remember is when you're approaching case studies, you really want it to be a play between the case study and the answers, eliminating answers until there's only one answer left. So if you love case studies, you're going to love my classes. The last count, we had over 5,000 case studies over all our courses. All our classes come with lots of case studies because I know those are super important for your tests. For our Cali, we do at least 2,500. Same for our Pan-Canadians, 2,500. And then the NCCOM, depending on the module you're studying. Okay, so as always, check out the links below if you are preparing for your board exams, if you're a third year student. Go to tcmreview.com for nationals in California. Go to tcmreview.ca for the Pan-Canadian exams. I look forward to helping you pass your board exams.